Hi, this is Kent Woodruff. I'm a retired Forest Service wildlife biologist. I'm delighted to be reading Enos Mills in Beaver World. It's uh, a book that I admired a long time ago and um, have continued to value. To work like a beaver is an almost universal expression for energetic and intelligent persistence. But who realizes the magnitude of the beaver's works? What he's accomplished is not only monumental but useful to man. He was the original conservationist. An interesting and valuable book could be written concerning the earth as influenced and benefited by the labors of the beaver. The beaver's intimately associated with the natural resources, soil, and water. His work is not yet done, and along the sources of innumerable streams, he will ever be needed to save soil, to regulate stream flow, and to provide pools for the fish. I'm Mary O'Brien, Utah Forest Program Director with Grand Canyon Trust. The beaver's conservation work is accomplished by means of the dams he constructs across streams of flowing water and the ponds that are thus formed. These dams and ponds render a number of services. First, they save soil. Second, they check erosion. Third, they reduce flood damage. Fourth, they store water and help to sustain stream flow. Fifth, they provide water holes for fish. And sixth, they are helpful in maintaining deep waterways by reducing the extremes of both high and low water and also by reducing the quantity of sediment carried down into river channels. I have enjoyed the ways of our first engineers before it dawned upon me that their works might be useful to man and that the beaver, through his constructive handling of the natural resources, might justly be called a conservationist. One dry winter, the stream through the moraine colony ran low and froze to the bottom, and the only trout in it that survived were those in the deep holes of beaver ponds. These ponds offer many advantages to fish multiplication. Much food acceptable to the fish is swept into these ponds. Altogether, a beaver pond is an excellent local habitation for fish. Sharon Brown, wildlife biologist, beavers, wetlands, and wildlife. One gray day, while I was examining a beaver colony, there came another demonstration of the usefulness of beaver ponds. The easy rain of two days ended in a heavy downpour, a deluge upon the mountainside a mile or so upstream. There was almost nothing on this mountain either to absorb or delay the excess of water, which was speedily shed into the stream below. Flooding down the stream's channel above the beaver pond came a roaring avalanche of water or water slide with a rubbish-filled front that was five or six feet high. This expanded as it rolled into the pond and swept far out on the sides while the water front, greatly lowered, rushed over the dam. A half dozen ponds immediately below sufficed so to check the speed of this water and so greatly to reduce its volume that as it poured over the last dam of this colony, it was no longer a flood. The regulation of stream flow is important. There are only a few rainy days each year and all the water that flows to the sea through river channels falls during these few rainy days. The instant the water reaches the earth, it is hurried away by gravity, and unless there are factors to delay this runoff, the rivers would naturally contain water only on the rainy days and for a little while thereafter. A beaver dam and pond together form a factor of importance in the keeping of stream ever flowing. This is Skip Lyle, president of Beaver Deceivers International. The pond is a reservoir which catches and retains some of the water coming into it during rainy days 
and which delays the water flow through it. A beaver pond is a leaky reservoir, a kind of spring, as it were, and if stored full during rainy days, the leakage from it will help maintain stream flow below during the dry weather. Beaver works thus tend to distribute to streams a moderate quantity of water each day. In other words, they spread out or distribute the water of the few rainy days through all the days of the year. A river which flows steadily throughout the year is of inestimable value to mankind. If floods sweep a river, they do damage. If low water comes, the wheels of streamers and of factories cease to move, and a dry river channel means both damage and death. Numerous beaver colonies along the sources of countless streams that rise in the hills and mountains would be helpful in equalizing the flow of these streams. I hope and believe that before many years, every Russian carefree brook that springs from a great watershed will be steadied in a poetic pond that is made and that will be maintained by our patient preserving friend, the beaver. My name is Emily Fairfax. I'm an assistant professor of environmental science and resource management. In the West, beaver are peculiarly useful at stream sources, where their ponds store floodwaters that may later be used for stock water or for irrigation purposes. There are a number of localities in New Mexico, South Dakota, and elsewhere in the West where beaver receive the utmost protection and encouragement from ranchers whose herds are benefited by water conveniently stored in beaver ponds. A few power companies in the country have commenced to stock with beaver the watersheds which supply them with water. They do this because they realize that countless small ponds or reservoirs are certain to be constructed by these little conservationists. Running water dissolves and erodes away the earthy materials with which it comes in contact. The presence of a beaver pond and dam across a stream's highway prevents the wearing and the carrying away of material. They not only prevent erosion or wearing away, but they take soil and sediment from the water which comes to them, and thus cause an upbuilding. Hence the presence of beaver ponds along streams causes an accumulation of sediment and soil. In time, these fill rocky channels and canyons, widen and lengthen valleys, and thus extend the productive area of the earth. Beaver ponds are settling basins, and in them are deposited the heavier matter brought in by the stream. In time, the pond is filled, and if the beaver do not raise the height of the dam, the accumulated earthy matter becomes covered with flowers or forests. This is Ellen Wool, Professor of Geology at Colorado State University. Many of the richest tillable lands of New England were formed by the artificial works of the beaver. There are hundreds of valleys in Kansas, Kentucky, Missouri, Illinois, and other states whose rich surface was spread upon them by the activities of beaver through generations. In the southern states and in the mountains of the west, the numbers of beaver meadows are beyond computation. The aggregate area of rich soil deposits in the United States for which we are indebted to the beaver is beyond belief and probably amounts to millions of acres. Francis Backhouse. Once they were hats in search of the mighty beaver. A few centuries ago, there were millions of beaver ponds in North America. Most of these were long since filled with sediment. Since then, too, countless others have been formed and filled. This soil saving and soil spreading still goes ever on wherever there is a beaver pond. The beaver have thus prepared the way for forests and meadows, orchards and grain fields, homes and schoolhouses. In the golden age of the beaver, their countless colonies clustered all over our land. These primeval folk then gathered their harvest. Innumerable beaver ponds, which then shone everywhere in the sun, slowly filled with deposited, outspreading soil and vanished. Elm avenues now arch where the low-growing willow drooped across the canal, and a populous village stands upon the seat of a primitive and forgotten colony. A live beaver is more valuable to mankind than a dead one. As trappers in all sections of the country occasionally catch a beaver, it is probable that there still are straggling ones scattered along streams all the way from salt water up to timberline, 12,000 feet above sea level. 
These remaining beaver may be exterminated, but if protected, they would multiply and colonize stream sources. Here they would practice conservation. Their presence would reduce river and harbor appropriations and make rivers more manageable, useful, and attractive. It would pay us to keep beaver colonies in the heights. Beaver would help keep America beautiful. My name is Sherry Tippy. I'm the president of Wildlife 2000 and a live beaver trapper. Here we go. A beaver colony in the wild gives a touch of romance and a rare charm to the outdoors. The works of the beaver have intensely interested the human mind. No boy or girl can become intimately acquainted with the ways and works of these primitive folks without having the eyes of observation open and acquiring a permanent interest in the wild world in which we live. A race which can produce mothers and fathers as noble as those beaver in the Grand Canyon who offered their lives hoping thereby to save their children is needed on this earth. The beaver is the Abu bin Adam of the wild. May his tribe increase. This is Heidi Perryman of Word the Dam. I want to thank all the readers who helped me bring my favorite chapter of Venus Mill's excellent book to life. We should all hope we might offer anything to the world that is still so profound a century later. 